Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my channel if you're new and a big warm hello to my subscribers. I love you guys. Today I am bringing you year-round heart-themed DIYs that you can leave up all year round. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. Here's a wooden heart palette that I found at the Dollar Tree. And then I went online and I picked three pretty prints. Now two of these are from free sites. One of them wasn't, so I had to download it into Canva and change it up a little bit. You have to change the color, remove a couple hearts, switch things around. You have to do something in order to do that, just so you know. If you guys can use prints online, but you just can't do an identical replica, you can get inspiration from it, but you do have to change it. So I went ahead and printed these up on computer paper and I'm, you know, it doesn't, the heart was a lot wider than what I thought. So it doesn't cover completely and I'm just going about trying to match it up so that you can't tell, um, you know, where the seam is. And in the end, it looks great. You can't see where one begins and one ends. And I'm using the Elmer's glue stick. It is the super hold or super strong one. I didn't notice that when I bought it. I got it at Walmart because my Dollar Tree was out of their glue sticks, but it's a great way to apply pretty much, well, almost everything, not everything. Some things do require Mod Podge, but you don't deal with wrinkling when you use a glue stick and you can always seal it if you want to with a clear varnish over and leave it there. Or after you put your varnish on and let it dry, you can apply Mod Podge if you like that look and your um, paper won't wrinkle that way because you have that protective light shield of plastic on it. So I'm taking a nail file. This is a really rugged nail file like the ones you use with acrylic nails and I'm just going around the edge. Super simple to do. You get a nice clean edge that way. And now I'm going ahead and making a messy bow. If you'd like to see how I make all of my bows, I have a full beautiful tutorial called 10 Christmas Bows. It's time stamped so you can go to whatever bow you're looking for and it covers a whole bunch of hacks and tricks and easy ways to make beautiful bows. All of my ribbon is from the Dollar Tree. Look at that super cute one right there with the barn. I found that and I thought, oh my gosh, this is perfect for the color combos. And the one thing I love about messy bows, because I know some people either love them or they hate them, but I, you know when you walk into a fabric store and you see all this beautiful material and you think, think about it for a minute and you realize the reason it's so striking is because it's in combination with all these other fabrics. I think that's why people do quilting because you get to use a bunch of different fabric that complements each other. Anyway, this is the same kind of vibe I get from a messy bow. I just love the way it. you can use so many different ribbon to get one feeling or vibe and it's just very complementary to each other. So I just stuck it as you saw right there in the center I'm holding it down with my finger and this is a fern pick I got from Walmart. It was not expensive. It was definitely not over three dollars. It may have even been a little bit less but you get a whole bunch. This is going to last me a long long time. In the end I think it ends up being the same as a Dollar Tree or maybe even a better deal in some cases depending on how you use your florals because you get so much and I cut mine off as you can see and I'm just tucking some boxwood in there. The boxwood is from Amazon. Super good deal. The link is down below in my description box. And these gorgeous soft roses that I found at the Dollar Tree. I love these. I went ahead and I stuck one in the middle of my bow. And I ordered some wooden beads online from Amazon, but they have not arrived yet. And for this DIY, that was not going to be negotiable. I really wanted to do the entire hanger with wooden beads. It's one of my favorite looks. I think it makes things that hang look so high end, but we're working with what we have. So I grabbed this Dollar Tree sign that I had in my craft stash and I cut the beads off of that. I have another DIY plan for that one, so I'm not worried about it. I have a total of 10 beads and I'm just going to split them on either side of the Dollar Tree twine. So we have five on one side and five on the other. And here's a trick. Some of you may know this. You use a little hot glue on the tip of your twine. Now my glue gun is on low and I've been doing crafting for many years and I got I guess tough fingers here but you want to be careful if you're new at this make sure your glue is very lukewarm before you start twisting but you'll get a nice firm tip there that you can easily use to thread the beads through it just makes it a lot simpler and of course if you have a big needle like a big upholstery needle or something with a big eye on the end of it you can always put your twine through that as well 
So we're just gluing this on the back. This is on my front door right now, but my front door actually has a glass screen door in front of it, so it's not really exposed to the elements. You can go ahead and put some tape on the back, either masking or duct tape while the glue's still hot, and it makes her a very strong hold that will stand up against the different weather changes but I'm not gonna need that this time, so I wasn't worried about it. And that's it, and I absolutely love this one. So I am working with the red buffalo check print again and this printable right here. All of my prints today are going to be free printables for you down below in my description box. It used to say see more. That's what you would click. They've changed it to more now. Don't get confused. Just click the word more. It's kind of smaller so you have to look for it. But a drop down menu will appear under the video and that's where all of the links are to my free printables. So these are some wooden hearts I got at Walmart. It was, I think, a package of six for a dollar. It was a great deal, and they don't have any holes in them, which I wanted. And I went ahead and cut, you can see what I did. I traced out the bottom half because that's going to have, you know, the paper on the half bottom or the bottom half of the heart. And then on the top, I am using the folklore antique wax. Any antique wax or watered down brown paint will work for this. And I'm just making a stain on the top of these hearts. And then I'm blow drying them here. And if you ever, you know, get the stain where it's too strong, you can always use a baby wipe or even a wet paper towel to wipe it off and it should correct itself. So don't panic. And now I'm using the glue stick again. Love my glue stick. And I'm gonna glue the paper on the bottom of the hearts. Now I did strategically choose what I wanted from the other print, I deliberately chose areas that had hearts on them because I thought that was pretty because we're doing a heart themed decor video. And I'm using the nail file again just to file off the paper. And we're going to be hanging these like this, alternating every other one. But first I wanted to decorate them with a little bit of ribbon. So I'm gonna use the Dollar Tree ribbon here, the lace one, and a glue stick and glue it down. Now I did do the kind of the middle part with the glue stick, but on the edges, I do use a hot glue gun to secure that ribbon in place. This is a big, beautiful roll of twine you can get at Walmart. I think it runs around $6, but this is the second one I've replaced in two years. And for as much as I craft, I didn't even finish the other one. I actually gave it to my daughter. There was plenty left, but I didn't take it with me when I moved. So it's a great, great deal and it's very good quality. And I still use a little bit of fire to burn off the hair just because I like a really clean look, but you certainly don't have to with this one. It's, an, it's a very good quality twine. So I'm starting here to lay all of my hearts down and glue them on the twine. But I mentioned in last week's video, if you missed it, it's part one to this, so make sure you go check it out. I mentioned when I hang things or make things that hang like this on the wall, I always take a little bit of glue and strategically place the items where I want them to either be angled or the nicest part facing forward. I never let them just hang freely because a lot of times when I've done that and it's on the wall, it doesn't look anywhere near as nice as what I thought it was going to look like. So it is a good idea to use your glue gun for that and tack down where you'd like everything to kind of, you know, you see how I tilted the hearts a little bit. It just looks pretty and graceful. So I made some twine bows for the front of these hearts and I did have some ribbon tied at the top there around the loop to hold it together, but it was covering the top bow and interfering with the look. So I went ahead and took some more twine to wrap it. And it occurred to me when I was doing this, if I had left that loop bigger, this would have been totally cute to go over the doorknob on a door, like a decor piece like that. But let me know what you guys think.
Here's another great find from the Dollar Tree. I got this in the spring section and I want it for tiered tray decor or just a little tiny shelf accent piece. It's so cute, but I wasn't sure if the bottom would come off and it did. Watch what I'm doing here. It's so simple. I just go back and forth and boom, it comes off. So if you see these, don't hesitate. They're so cute. And I'm taking a heart shape here, tracing out on the Buffalo check paper. We're gonna keep it in a theme and I'm gonna go ahead and put that heart on the little canister there. So this really surprised me. I wasn't sure if the glue gun was gonna work. I thought, I wonder if I have to do Mod Podge. Well, we're gonna try it and we're gonna see how it does over the next few days. I have this above my sink where I do dishes right now because I haven't unpacked my tiered tray and it is going strong even with some steam from the hot water coming up it's not coming off so I was really pleased about that and I didn't even seal it either not yet because I thought well I'll take this downstairs and I'll take it outside and spray it because that's a whole setup with cardboard on my deck and we had a little bit of snow so I wasn't able to do that but I don't think it's going to need it so I'm just going to go ahead and take some Mod Podge and paint the top of this heart and put a little bit around the edges and call it a day because I'm planning on keeping this on a three-tiered tray. So this is going to be for Valentine's and I'm probably also going to keep it up, well I am going to keep it up during the summertime because I think this makes a great all year round piece. And I'm taking some burnt umber now and I'm just kind of putting it on there. You can see what I'm doing and rubbing it with my finger. I just felt like it made the metal look a little bit more authentic, like it was outdoors a little bit, like it's a real watering can instead of sparkling, you know, brand new from the Dollar Tree. Both ways look cute. It totally depends on your decor style, but that's what we end up with. And I think that looks really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of the Spanish moss that I got from Amazon. This is that really nice, thick Spanish moss. And I put it inside this little water can because we're going to make a little garden here. I'm taking some of the skewer sticks from the Dollar Tree here. I showed this last week again, last week is part one to this video, but what I did is I took the foam hearts from the Dollar Tree, I stuck them on the skewer stick, and then I painted them white and antique parchment. And then I mixed one drop of bright pink paint into the white paint, and these are both apple barrel paint again. And I added that on the very last third coat was the pink color, because I wanted a pastel pink. And then I did my third coat of the antique parchment on these hearts to get them fully covered so that there was no sparkle and glitter showing through. And now I'm taking these and I put a dot of hot glue on the skewer and I'm gonna go ahead and stake them up so that they look like this. And we have two cream and one pink. And then I'm taking some of the boxwood branches and I'm just sticking them in here and there. And I'm gonna put those little hearts in and that's it. I think this makes such a cute all year round country farmhouse decor piece. For this next craft, I'm using paint sticks, but you can use some of the shims that I've spoken about before or some lath, which comes in eight feet. That's spelled L-A-T-H. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. Anyway, I'm cutting two little pieces there the same width of the planks that I put together. Now for painter sticks for this craft, I like those little grooves. I think it looks like little uneven pieces of wood and makes it look more rustic. So that's why I chose the painter sticks. Usually I hate those grooves, but for this one, I thought it looked super, super cute. And I'm using a little bit of wood glue here and some hot glue. Now wood glue is the best glue for raw wood. I've spoken about this before too, but for my new viewers here, wood glue actually becomes part of wood at a molecular level so a lot of times when you glue it down you'll try to pull it off later and you, the wood will stick with the glue you'll actually break it off so really nice strong hold the second great choice is a super glue that works good for wood as well 
E6000 does not. It soaks into the wood, at least from my experience. That's just not a great one to choose. So I want to make this look older. So I just take a sharp tool. You can use any sharp tool you want. And I just start hitting it to make little holes and grooves in it to make it look a little bit older because those paint sticks are a little too pristine for my taste, you know, for my look. Now I'm just cutting out a heart using some burlap I got from Walmart there. I think it was a little over $4 for a yard. And I want to give this wood a little bit of a white wash, but I still want the grain to show through. So the way I did it this time was to mix some acrylic paint with water and then use a sponge to wipe it off until I got the look I wanted. I just wanted to be really careful that I didn't hide the grain in the wood. So I used the sponge to add some control there. And now I'm taking a pencil and just darkening those little lines in between and taking wax and I'm just adding a little bit of aging here. Now normally I use black, but because I whitewashed it and it was so bright, I just thought maybe the black might be a little too harsh for this craft. Burnt umber paint mixed with black when I, I've done that in previous videos as well. That makes a great aging stain too. Any kind of brown mix, mixed with black in my opinion works great for that. And if you have a darker craft or you really want to get down and dirty, uh, no pun intended, I use just plain black. So I'm taking and making sure that I accentuate those little holes with a little bit of shadow as well because if this had been outside it would have collected dirt and it would have been darker where I made those grooves. And now I'm just picking the edges apart, kind of fraying I guess the burlap heart. And this you have to be really careful. I was pulling the pieces and it can unravel really easy. So just use your fingernail and kind of scrape along the edge there with your fingernails. Don't pull the threads. That frays the edges just fine. I made my bow by tying a little bit more of the lace ribbon that I cut in half in the middle and then I decided to leave those ties hanging down to give it more, you know, little hanging threads. I just thought that looked cuter than just a plain bow. And I used some dry flowers from a Mother's Day bouquet my kids got me last year. I've been drying it upside down in my garage for a year. I love dried flowers. these hearts at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to remove the tape from the back. So I'm just giving it a nice light sanding here because the strip I pulled off it wasn't too sticky but I just wanted a nice smooth surface and here's the paper that I this will be a free printable down below in my description box but I actually found those prints online and I went ahead and changed them up a little bit to make them my own and then created printables for you and you just print them up on your printer so this isn't any kind of special craft paper it's just computer paper that's it you can print it up on cardstock if you want the same quality as craft paper but I'm just using computer paper and the glue stick. I also decide for this that craft I want some of these little yarn heart things which are really easy to make. You just cut out heart shapes from cardboard and then take white yarn or whatever color yarn you want and you wrap them up until they're covered and they look like this and you add a little bits of hot glue wherever you need to. Super easy to do. When the little hearts here that I just glued with my glue stick 
are dry, I go ahead and take some of the burnt umber and this little sponge from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna go ahead and distress and age the edges of it. And you'll see that I go in the middle a little bit more, because at first I'm just kind of staining it to give it kind of like an ink stained effect. I usually don't work with ink because I end up getting it on my fingers and I can't wash it off. So I try to stick with paint, but if you have ink and you like using ink, feel free to use the ink that would work beautifully too and here's what I'm talking about see how I go and I put a deeper middle I just want to emphasize the shape of the heart a little bit more with my shadowing this is kind of like contouring actually now this is also from the Dollar Tree I think it's like maybe a coconut shell basket or it's made out of coconut husk I'm not sure I'm not sure what this is made out of. If you guys know, leave a comment down below, please, in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And by the way, I do read every single one of your comments, and I try to respond to all of them as well whenever I can. So you saw me crinkling up some tissue paper there just to give it some height so I don't have to use all of the Spanish moss. And then I cover that with the Spanish moss, and I go about filling in my basket. I'm also using some of those wooden hearts there that are also from the Dollar Tree. And that's how I'm going to leave it up all year round but I am putting this up for Valentine's Day so I wanted to show you those two little pink hearts I got those from Walmart 98 cents each because they're gonna be my Valentine's Day decor and I absolutely love this I found this great little envelope at the Dollar Tree. It is a Valentine's Day item, and I don't know if they're gonna bring it out for another holiday, but you could always use other Dollar Tree signs and a utility knife and cut this shape if you want to. I would, because this craft came up so cute that I think it's worth doing, but it's just a simple pattern for an envelope. There's like a little house shape in the back you can see in that shape there. I mean, this is easily something you could do just by measuring it out and cutting. Now I do choose to use Mod Podge to apply this paper because the label was really difficult to get off. I don't know if it was because they glued extra board in between to kind of make it so that you could slip things between the envelope. I'm not sure, but it took about 20 minutes of soaking and then the glue was still on there and it was a little bit kind of gummy and sticky still and just not a suitable surface for a glue stick. So I went with the Mod Podge. I glued this paper down. This paper will be a free printable for you down below and went ahead, did the same thing I did with all the other things. I just trim most of it off with my scissors and then take a sanding block just to kind of clean up the edges so they're nice and crisp and clean. And then that's what we have so far. And now I decide to go ahead and use, you know, I still want it to be a gap just like it was when I bought it from the Dollar Tree but I want it to look more high end so I'm using three of the towering blocks I glued them together in a row like you can see right here and then I'm going to glue them on either side of the envelope and that's what's going to create the little opening and gap for me so that I can put whatever I want inside the envelope and of course anytime you add wood like that you're going to add weight which makes the craft feel higher quality like it comes from a Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Walmart or Kirkland's or wherever you shop. So the way I tackle the bottom here is just to use some craft sticks. These are the large craft sticks. I got them from Amazon. The link is probably down below my description box. I'm pretty sure it is. But you can get these at the Dollar Tree all day long as well. And I just cut off the ends and measured to create a nice flat wooden bottom. Using the furniture pen in walnut, I'm going to go ahead and distress this. Now, the paper definitely soaks up these pens really quick, so don't linger if you use the pen. Move quickly because it soaks in like a sponge, so you don't want it to go too far across the paper. Then we're going to take one of these Dollar Tree wooden hearts again. If you find the package of these wooden hearts, they are so elegant looking to me, the design there. I just think that's one of the higher end little wood cutouts that they've done at the Dollar Tree in a while. I glue that in the center and now we're using some greenery I got from Amazon. I got a great deal. I will also leave the link down below in my description box and I fill this up but I absolutely love the way this came out.
Next up is this Walmart sign. This is actually not a clearance sign. It is just a regular sign there with the everyday price of a dollar. You find it in their crafting aisle. And I'm showing you how it comes with that little stick in the back that holds it up, which I thought was pretty cool. And now I'm going to use a cereal box. Now you certainly can use poster board if you want, but cereal box always saves you more money. And I'm taking this letter that I got online. I just Googled antique letter and that's what came up for common create creative commons it's where you can do it without copyright that's what came up so i have that as a free printable for you and i just tore it in little pieces and glued it down with a glue stick because i wanted it to be kind of like a collage on the heart and i used a little tiny bit of hot glue to hold the cereal box in place so that i could go ahead and trace underneath because there's like a ridge on the back side of the heart where i need this to fit inside it you'll see it right there I kind of pop it out. It's underneath the wood frame area, so that worked perfectly. You know, you just use a little tiny bit of hot glue that you can pick off with your fingernail afterwards, and it holds it nice and tight for you. So this is a rub-on transfer from the Dollar Tree. I love these rub-on transfers, and this one in particular is really pretty. It's all in French, and I thought it was perfect for this frame. So I'm just taking a credit card there and rubbing it off, but I have to tell you it's really hard to get this off I really had to rub so if you use these transfers be prepared to really scratch and grind it down into the wood in order to get it to stick I just kept kind of lifting and if I noticed a letter hadn't stuck down or I was missing something I would just put it down again and then rub hard in that area and you just have to be patient and eventually you get it to come all off so as you can see, I'm using the leftover part that was in the middle of the heart to finish off the edges of this frame. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not worried if a little bit of wood is showing because the whole rub off transfer was kind of just a mismatched, you know, collage of love phrases and French, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I thought it, you know, in my opinion, the more imperfect it looks, the better it looks with this particular craft the, you know the look that I'm going for and now I'm just using some craft sticks gluing it on the back of the cereal box to give it more weight and to stop it from curling and this is a lid opener to pop off lids thought it was so cute because it's like an antique key it just was perfect for this craft I used a little bit of hot glue and stuck it down and that worked fine to hold it and this is a perfect piece for Valentine's Day French country or all year round is their Dollar Tree heart and I thought I could make a super cute all year round decor piece with this. I just start off again with my white chalk paint to cover it up. You kind of have to do that. It's like a blank slate at that point. <laughs> Here's my free printable and I printed it up on the tissue paper again and I'm just going to cut it out carefully and glue it on top of this sign. But white paint on the Dollar Tree signs works really great too because you can stain over it if you want to with either the antique wax or with the I used to use I don't have any right now but it's in my description box it's a water-based stain totally odorless and works beautiful so I glued that down with a glue stick then I used a pencil to make those little lines and then I used a gray color from Apple Barrel paint you can use any gray color you want and I painted them in and then I dry brushed white paint over it Now I'm using the Dollar Tree mop head thread. You actually pull it out from their mops and I'm breaking it apart to create a very pretty romantic streamer at the bottom of this heart. And I'm using some of the Dollar Tree florals that I absolutely love. I picked up like 10 of these because I thought they were so pretty. And I'm gluing that at the bottom. Next you're gonna see that I use a little bit of lace from the Dollar Tree as a hanger. To distress the edges of the heart, I'm choosing a pencil and that's it. <laughs> Also on my last Shot With Me video, I grabbed one of these signs from the Dollar Tree, some of these hearts that say I love you more, and I, we're gonna go ahead and just give it one coat of white chalk paint. Now I did soak water on the top of that label to peel off 
the glitter and just note to self and note to everyone else I never wash my glitter down the sink because my husband told me I guess the glitter is killing our sea life and I guess it would be pretty hard to breathe with millions of little particles running around in the water there they're plastic so be careful if you soak off glitter from the Dollar Tree labels that you throw it in your trash can so it can go in the landfills it's much safer for our wildlife so all I did there, I'm just showing you, I took some burnt umber, the baby wipe trick again, and I stained the words, I love you more, to make it a nice color. And now, forgive the cardboard, you guys, I could not find my ruler. So we're using this for a straight line, but I'm scoring the board. I just think, I think it makes the boards look a lot more realistic when you do this. You're putting an actual groove into the Dollar Tree board, and then the brown from the board peeks through, and it looks more like real shiplap. And it also feels, you know, there's a groove there, so it just looks better all the way around. And then I'm going to place the words down carefully. And as you can see, I'm marking just really lightly with a little bit of pencil there so I can remember where I had them when I lift them up to go to glue them down. So even though I marked where I wanted these, it ended up not working out very well because they kind of wiggle and move even though you're trying not to have them do that. And what worked better was to keep them in position and then just kind of squeak a little narrow glue gun down underneath them and move very quickly and glue them down that way. So these are the three hearts that I set aside. I mentioned in the beginning of the video with the heart tree that were the raw wood ones. I wanted to stain these and I'm going ahead and using the baby wipe again with the burnt umber from Apple Barrel Paint and I'm just staining these three hearts. <music> I'm going to position them in the areas where I feel like there's just a little bit too much white showing. It just needs something there. And it ends up looking really, really pretty. It just looks like little floating hearts around the words. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and use a thread from the nautical rope. I just pull it apart in different sections. You can make it any width you want. And I make it the width that I want for this sign, thread it through the holes in the top, tie a knot on the back of it and then what I like to do to make sure the signs don't fall I've been doing this for years you can use any tape you want you can use duct tape if you want a really strong hold I use masking tape and that seems to work fine because it kind of melts into the hot glue but I just add a little bit of hot glue and while it's still hot I press tape down on top of it and so far for decades I've never had anything fall when I do it this way in fact I made a snowman last year no the year before out of stovetop covers some of you might remember and I just wanted you all to know it went through seven rainstorms where the rain was pouring on it directly and it is still completely intact I packed it away again for another year and now I'm using the furniture marker again it is great for distressing if you find this it's a package of three at the Dollar Tree they come in different colors including black I love these. They're so much easier than a paintbrush. Now that was a little bit too brown for me. So I'm just taking a black permanent marker and kind of like lightly going over the edge. I'm almost bumping it up and down. I don't know if you can tell, so it's not hitting it solid. And I also do that around the edges of the hearts, not the words, just the heart, because I thought that would look nice. And that's it. <laughs> For this next DIY, you can also use a wood palette heart sign from Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree had not yet carried them when this was filmed. For this craft, I used a Dollar Tree heart and this utility panel from Home Depot. You can also get it at Lowe's. I think they're about the same price. And I cut it into a heart shape using this cute little Dremel. Now it worked. You can see the little edges there are a little jagged. I actually love that. I think it adds to the rustic feel. And I'm using a Dollar Tree calendar. And I'm gonna go ahead and trace this heart out here. Now, 
it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to be you know doing something to the edges here you'll see in a minute to make it fit but just to start out trace your heart and you don't have to have a calendar for this either it's just I like to use up the calendar pages and I thought this was so beautiful but you can find so many beautiful images like this online so anything that you find that you like use that so here I'm taking this time some fire and I'm gonna burn the end just singe the edges I want to leave that little brown mark behind I want the edges to be uneven so now I'm adding some Mod Podge for this this you know I've been using the glue stick a lot lately talking about how it doesn't leave lumps and bumps and that is true but for this particular craft I do want some wrinkling I do want a little bit of lumps and bumps because I think that looks more like old paint when it lifts and bubbles and I'm gonna sand the top a little bit and wherever those raised surfaces are it will sand off and we'll just add to that whole look that I'm going for <music> And after I glue the image on, I let it dry, and then I take it out in the garage and I cut it into four even little palette shapes. So I kind of follow the line, but you don't have to have a line. You can take any image and just measure and cut it like that. I didn't bother with wood glue because you know it's it's the same thickness as a Dollar Tree sign so really thin really lightweight you can use wood glue if you want it to be extra strong you can always do that or some super glue that would work too but you don't have to the hot glue will hold just fine if, if it's just for a little decor piece but if you're going to be rough with it use something stronger and now I'm going to take some of my water acrylic stain here I love this stuff it's odorless so if you're sensitive to odors it's ideal but this worked a little bit better when I did a test run off camera. I just did something on a scrap piece of wood and paper with the wax and this worked better as far as being slimy and kind of staining the edges of the paper like you see it you can see it it's staining the paper there and kind of soaking into the paper a little bit so that worked a little bit better for me for the look I was going for if all you have is wax use that if all you have is brown paint water your brown paint down and try to make it perform a lot like a stain if you do that it should and this is what you end up with you guys and i absolutely love this If you had fun today and enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And as always, until the next one, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy. Mm -hmm.